What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.5 and it's a minor update but it does contain some interesting new features that you'll want to know about. So in this video, we're going to be discussing those new features and changes, we're going to talk about the performance and battery life, and of course if you should update or not. So let's start by talking about what's new in this update. So throughout this video, I will have iOS 18.4.1 on the left, iOS 18.5 on the right so you can see the differences side by side. So the first change comes inside of the mail application. We actually have a couple of changes in here. So first off, you can tell visually that we do have a change if you have the categories enabled inside of the mail application. So if you take a look over here on the far right corner, you can now see a preview of all mail. So if we tap right here, of course, it does take you to all mail. So you can see all of your mail not categorized. And there was never a preview of that before. But now you can see right there, it kind of sticks out to indicate that there is another section for all mail. But that's not the only change in the mail application because also if you tap on the three dots up in the top right hand corner, we have a new option for show contact photos. So before, if you wanted to access that, you had to go into settings, but now it's a quick toggle straight from the three dot menu inside of the mail application. Now that toggle is still inside of the settings. If you go down under message list, you can see we have contact photos or show contact photos right there. So it exists in settings, but it also exists as a quick toggle right here in the three dot menu inside of mail. Now there's also a nice change inside of our settings. If we go into the general section and then down to Apple care and warranty, this whole page has been revamped with iOS 18.5. So you'll notice right away that we have a new header along with a new icon at the top that now says Apple care and warranty. And it gives us a little description that says view coverage status for all your devices and purchase coverage for eligible devices. And it's not just that top menu we also have some other changes as well so first off you can see this device and more devices the font is larger also if you look at the orange text it used to say eligible to add apple care plus now it says eligible to add apple care plus plan so we have an extra word added on right there also these white boxes are a little bit larger for each device and you can see that before it would just load all of your devices in now it does not load all of them at once we have a show more option if you want to show more of your device so if you go ahead and tap on that, it will just load in the rest of them. And then if you go into one of the devices, so we'll go into 15 public beta right here, you'll notice a change here as well. So first off, up at the top, we have add Apple Care Plus coverage. You can see before that was just text that you can click on. Now it's, you know, better defined. It also says there are 55 days left to add coverage right under that, along with a add button right there. So it's more clear and easier to add Apple Care coverage. Also underneath of that, we have the limited warranty. So a new kind of section for that that shows the warranty when it expires and it shows what your device is covered for so before it kind of just looked like this it was kind of just text and it wasn't really attractive now it's made to look a lot better with iOS 18.5 if you tap on learn more about my benefits you have a slight change here as well so it says limited warranty up top instead of Apple limited warranty benefits and also some of this wording is a bit different than it was beforehand also right here where it says Apple support you can see we have a new subheader right there that says need help and also the Apple support icon is smaller than it was before and also underneath of Apple support which is now bold by the way as well it also shows get help for all your Apple products before it did not say that at all so yeah a nice change to the Apple care and warranty section I know you probably don't go there very often but that has changed here with 18.5 I also really like that it shows the exact model of your devices as well right there so it shows these are AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation because if you didn't name that yourself, you might get confused as to what products are in your list for, you know, Apple Care and warranty devices. We also have a change inside of accessibility. So if we head into our accessibility settings and go to touch and then go down to back tap, we have a change right here because now we have the option to show banner. So now you get the option to show or hide a banner when you invoke back tap. So you can see up top, we do have this banner right here. So it's not the best looking banner in terms of the UI of it, but you do get that banner when you do invoke back tap. So if something happens randomly, you know what caused it so you can see that you now have the option to hide that banner if you would like to so if you double tap now on the back you can see you no longer get that banner 
up top. Now here is a really interesting and kind of unexpected change in iOS 18.5. So this update adds support for carrier provided satellite features on all iPhone 13 models. So if you have an iPhone 13, even the Pro and Pro Max, any iPhone 13 model, you now have access to carrier provided satellite features. So as you know, Apple partnered with Global Star for the iPhone 14, allowing it to connect to satellites for emergency situations if you do not have cell service. But of course, since the iPhone 13 was released the year prior, it does not have the hardware needed for emergency SOS. But now, thanks to Starlink, you don't need any special hardware because Starlink uses satellites that talk to your phone like a regular cell tower. We just needed the software update to allow our iPhones to accept that signal. Now, right now, this is only available for T-Mobile customers in the US, but this will roll out to other carriers in the future. Now, it's very important to note that on the iPhone 13 series, you will not get access to emergency SOS via satellite. You will not have the hardware needed for that because the iPhone 14 and later have have custom designed antennas specifically for Global Star and the emergency SOS features. But still, it's pretty amazing that the iPhone 13 is now gonna have access to satellite connectivity. It's pretty awesome what Starlink is doing. Of course, you can turn off satellite in your cellular settings. If you don't want this, if you're never gonna use it, you can turn it off. It's not something that's gonna be enabled permanently. You do have the option to turn it off. Also with iOS 18.5, if you go into the screen time section down here, if you have a child on your account that you've set up in your family, you now get a notification when the screen time passcode has been used on a child's device. So if you have a child's device with locked applications, like maybe they hit their screen time limit or you're just not allowing them to get into certain applications, if they go into it and they go to ask for more time and they enter the screen time passcode here or anywhere else and they're actually able to get in, you will get a notification on your device now that they actually used the passcode. So if they somehow guess the passcode or they watch you put it in and you didn't know that they knew the passcode, you'll now be alerted that they did use that screen time passcode on their device. And there is also a toggle for this in your settings. So if you go into your settings and go to notifications and then go down to screen time. So we'll go down here to the S's. And if you go down to customize notifications, you can see that under child or teen, you have the option for screen time passcode. And it has a description that says receive a notification when a child or teen in your family uses the screen time passcode for their device. So if you don't want that notification for some reason, you can go ahead and turn that off, but it is on by default after you update to 18.5. This update also gives us a new wallpaper. So if you go down to add a new wallpaper and then you scroll down to the pride section, we have a brand new pride harmony wallpaper. So you can see it's this right here. There are no alternative options. There's just this one option right here, but it is pretty cool. So if we go ahead, back to our home screen. I'll show you what this looks like. So I have it set up right here and you have a pretty cool animation when you go from the lock screen to the home screen. So you can see right here, every time you go, it kind of shifts into a new kind of pattern right there. So different colors and you can see that the arrows look a little bit different. So pretty cool. It does also have a really neat always on mode. So this is what it looks like in always on and the always on display. When you lock it, you can see it kind of changes direction every time as well. So pretty cool. It is a colorful, nice new pride wallpaper there. There is also a new watch face as well. So if you have an Apple watch, there's a new watch face with a cool little animation here on the Apple watch. And what do you guys think about the pride wallpapers? Every 0.5 update, we do get pride wallpapers. So I'm curious to know your thoughts on this one. Are you a fan? Are you going to be using it? Let me know your thoughts down below. And this update also allows you to buy with your iPhone when you purchase content within the Apple TV application on a third party device. Device. So now if you want to buy something on Apple TV, like a movie or a TV series, and you're on a third party device like a TV or any other non Apple device, you will now get the option to buy with iPhone and you will have to confirm that on your iPhone to purchase it on that third party device. And then also in the release notes of iOS 18.5, I found a very interesting new feature that Apple mentions. So it says broadcast extensions now have a higher per process memory limit 
This should enable capturing and streaming content at higher quality if the system resources are available. So basically, if you're doing a screen recording of your device or if you're just streaming live on Twitch or something like that, it seems like you will now have a better experience. It'll be higher quality and less lag and less issues because there's now more RAM being allotted to that broadcast extension, aka recording your screen. Now, we do also have a couple of bug fixes with iOS 18.5. So first off, Apple mentions this one so it is related to the apple vision pro application which is a relatively new application as of ios 18.4 so this now has a fix where if it turned black if it just displayed a black screen that has been fixed with 18.5 so apple says fixes an issue where the apple vision pro app may display a black screen we also thankfully have a fix in the notification center so the notification center had quite a few issues after ios 18.4 so this little response right here you can see it was kind of jittery before but it is much better here with 18.5 it's still not perfect as you can see it kind of jolts up there a little bit but it is a lot smoother than it was on previous builds like ios 18.4 so still some work to be done there but it is at least a little bit better and then also if you had issues with carplay after installing ios 18.4.1 so as you know 18.4.1 did fix a lot of the carplay issues especially related to wireless carplay so if you still had any outstanding issues with carplay after installing 18.4 4.1 it seems like those have been solved here in ios 18.5 based on a lot of your guys comments and also social media posts it seems like the issues related to your carplay not playing music and also where you'd have to like reconnect your phone like five or six times it seems like those issues have gone away after installing 18.5 and then of course apple did mention some of the fixes in the release notes for ios 18.5 so i will leave these release notes down in the description below if you do want to read through them now the one thing apple has not released yet are the security patches with iOS 18.5. So I would expect iOS 18.5 to patch up some security vulnerabilities. Hopefully nothing major, but we don't know yet as of the time of recording. But once that is updated and published, I will leave that down in the description below. And of course, if there's anything serious, I will be making a follow-up video telling you guys about these security issues and just how serious they are or are not. Now, moving on to the performance and the battery life performance on iOS 18.5 five has been solid it's not going to be a big jump from ios 18.4 so if you've been having lag issues and really just issues with the overall performance on 18.4 i honestly would not expect those to improve very much here with ios 18.5 you might see a small bump in performance and you might see some bugs being fixed but don't expect anything major in terms of performance for ios 18.5 now i did run a geekbench score and we scored a 35 37 on the single core 87 51 on the multi core score that is slightly lower than what we scored on ios 18.4 when that was first released right here but the scores are pretty close and they are pretty similar so i would expect again a very similar performance to what we already had with ios 18.4 which is not a bad thing and then as far as the battery life goes i would also not expect a major change to battery life going from 18.4 or 18.4.1 up to 18.5 however if you were on the betas for 18.5 i would expect a minor bump in and battery life since you are not on a beta any longer and you don't have that background logging and all those analytics running in the background but as far as if you're on a public release going to another public release don't expect a major bump but it should be a bit more stable now you may not have as much variance in your battery life with 18.5 since we are getting close to the end of ios 18. now with all that being said should you update to ios 18.5 and i would say at this point in the life cycle of ios 18 yes you should just go ahead and update you know even if you're not interested in any of the new features i would say it's worth it to update just for the security patches and bug fixes alone now if you do have an iphone 13 i do think it's absolutely worth updating to ios 18.5 especially if you are a t-mobile user so you will get access to those satellite connectivity features those can be very big if you are somewhere where you do not have signal and you might need signal to get in contact with somebody but for everybody else again if you're not on the iphone 13 series i do think it's a solid update for the security patches the bug fixes and of course the features are a nice bonus on top but again this late into the ios 18 life cycle it really doesn't make any sense to just stay on an older version especially if you are planning to beta test ios 19 which is coming up very soon and when i say very soon i mean that we're going to see ios 
MLS 19 Beta 1 on Monday, June 9th. That is the first day of WWDC, and that's when we will see the first beta of the next major release, iOS 19. Now, we will be getting iOS 18.6 betas very soon if you are on the beta train. If not, we will most likely get the final release of iOS 18.6 at some time in June, maybe even early July. But don't expect anything major from iOS 18.6. Again, all the big features are going to be in iOS 19. Anyways, guys, that's it for iOS 18.5. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this update overall. If you like the Pride wallpaper, if you like the new features, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. If you want to continue seeing these new iOS updates, update videos, especially with iOS 19 coming up soon, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any of those videos. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.